This video is for educational purposes only. Always get permission before testing. Unauthorized hacking is illegal. Use your skills to protect, not harm. Today, we're targeting NASA for our recon practice. NASA has an active vulnerability disclosure program, and they're also on Bug Crowd, so we can legally test and report any security issues we find. Here are NASA's program details. They have five assets in scope that we are allowed to test legally, but we must follow their rules carefully. Before you start testing, check what actions are allowed and what actions are not allowed. Also, review which vulnerabilities they accept and which ones they do not accept. This will help you focus on valid findings and avoid testing anything that is out of scope. Now, take all the assets from NASA's program and copy them. Go to your Kali machine and open your terminal. Create a new file named domains.txt. This file will store all the in-scope domains that we will use for our reconnaissance. To create the folder name NASA and then create file, type nanodomains.txt, and then paste all the copied assets into this file. This will help us organize our targets and prepare for the next steps in our recon workflow. Now copy all the domains from your domains file and open your browser. I always use Brave Browser because it doesn't matter how many URLs you open at once, it handles them smoothly. I also use an extension called Open Multiple URLs. Paste all the copied domains into this extension and open them in your browser. Once all the domains are open, check the technologies each domain is using. For this, I use an extension called Wapalizer. It's the best for quickly identifying what technologies are running on each site. Checking the technologies helps us understand the target better, which will help us in the next steps of our recon process. Now we start subdomain enumeration. For this, we use a tool called SubFinder. It's a very good tool for quickly finding subdomains. Subdomain enumeration is the process of finding all the subdomains for our target site. This helps us expand our scope and increases our chances of finding vulnerabilities. The more subdomains we find, the more assets we have to test, and this can lead to more opportunities for valid and impactful findings. Now here you can see the results. These are all the subdomains that SubFinder has found for our target. Here we found a total of 3,348 subdomains for our target. This gives us a wide surface to work with in our recon process and increases our chances of finding valuable vulnerabilities. Now we will find even more subdomains using another tool called Sublister. This tool doesn't support running a full domain list at once, so we need to run it one domain at a time. We will save the output from each run separately so that we can combine and organize all the results later for our recon workflow. Here, you can see we are getting some errors. These errors happen for some sites like VirusTotal because the API key is not set, but don't worry about these errors. Just leave the tool running and it will still collect the results for the other domains. Here is the result, and this time it found only one domain. Now, we will run this tool in the same way for every domain we have, so we can collect as many subdomains as possible for our recon process.
We save the results for each domain in a separate folder. Later, we will combine all these lists into one single list. This will help us organize our subdomains clearly and make it easier to move to the next steps in our recon workflow. After we finish enumerating all the domains with Sublister, we use a tool called Subranger. Subranger is my own tool, and it helps us grab subdomains from various web sources like crt.sh, Wayback Machine, and many more. I've added the link to this tool in the description below, so make sure to check it out and try it in your recon workflow. Here are all the results we got from Subranger. This has helped us find even more subdomains, giving us a wider attack surface for our recon process. Here are all the files we have collected so far. Now, we will run another tool called Asset Finder. Asset Finder is also one of the best tools for subdomain enumeration, but it only supports scanning one domain at a time. To manage the results efficiently, we will use another tool called Anew. A new helps us append the new results directly into our previously created output file while filtering out any duplicate subdomains. This way, only unique subdomains will be added to our master list, keeping our recon organized and clean. We will follow the same process one by one for every domain from our domain list. This will help us collect as many unique subdomains as possible for each target, keeping our recon thorough and organized. If it shows nothing in the output, don't worry. It means that no new unique subdomains were found during this search. That's why it doesn't display anything. It will only show results when a new unique subdomain is found because we are using the A New tool to filter duplicates automatically. Now, I am using another tool called Amass. Amass is a powerful tool for recon and has different modes like Intel mode and Enum mode. It also supports both active and passive enumeration. Right now, I am using the active recon mode to find more subdomains for our target. Here, we are not using a domain list with a mass. Instead, we run it on a single domain at a time. This helps us get a clear list of subdomains for each domain, making it easier to filter and organize our results during recon. A mass gives us more results compared to other tools. It not only finds subdomains, but also provides extra information like IP addresses, ASN numbers, and services running on the domains. Because of this, a mass works a bit slower, but the results it gives are very efficient and valuable for our recon process. Be patient while waiting for the results. If you rush, you might miss important information and even potential bugs. Taking your time during recon will always give you a better chance of finding valuable vulnerabilities. Here are the results from a mass. You will see there is a lot of additional information in the output. Now, I have filtered out all the extra details and grabbed only the subdomains we need for our recon. If you don't know how to use one-liner bash commands for filtering, don't worry. I have provided the exact commands in the description below. Keep learning and practicing to improve your recon skills. Here we have all the output from a mass. To clean it up, I use the grep command to filter out any numbers and extract only the text that includes the subdomains. Then, I match the results with the domain names we need so we only keep the relevant subdomains. After that, I use the sort command to organize the subdomains and remove any duplicates from the list. Finally, I use the anew tool to add only the unique subdomains into our subdomains.txt file, keeping our recon data clean and well organized for the next steps. Here, we have the final result after adding the subdomains we found using a mass. 
you can see that more subdomains have been added to our list, giving us a larger and more complete set of targets for our recon process. Now, we will run the same process for all of our domains. This will help us collect as many unique subdomains as possible for each target. Now we are starting subdomain brute forcing to find more hidden subdomains that are not publicly listed anywhere. Subdomain brute forcing requires a list of possible DNS names to test, and for that, we use seclists. Seclists is a huge collection of word lists for security testing, including many word lists specifically for subdomain enumeration. You can also use your own custom word lists if you want, but using seclists will give you a solid starting point for your brute forcing process. Here you can see there are many different word lists available for DNS brute forcing. Selecting the best word list is very important, as it can give you much better results during your recon. A well-chosen word list increases your chances of finding hidden subdomains that others might miss. Now, we are using another tool called DNS Validator. This tool helps us collect the latest valid DNS resolvers. Using good resolvers is very important for reducing noise during our subdomain brute forcing. It helps us ensure that the results we get after brute forcing are accurate and we only collect valid subdomains for our recon process. Here is the final list of resolvers we have collected using DN's validator. These valid resolvers will help us get clean and accurate results during our subdomain brute forcing. Now we will start subdomain brute forcing using a tool called ShuffleDNs. ShuffleDNs is fast and effective for discovering hidden subdomains. It requires mass DNs to work properly and give good results. By using ShuffleDNs with mass DNs, we can efficiently brute force subdomains and expand our recon scope even further. Here are the results from our brute forcing. We have collected a huge number of subdomains. Even though not all of them will be valid, we hope to find some existing subdomains that we couldn't collect before. We will run this brute forcing process in the same way for all of our domains to make our recon as complete as possible. Now we have many files containing our collected subdomains. Some of these files have common subdomains that are repeated across different lists. To keep our recon organized and easy to use, we will now filter out the duplicates and combine everything into a single file. This will give us a clean, unique list of subdomains ready for the next steps in our recon process. Now, we will use the Anew tool to filter out the common subdomains and create a single file with unique entries. This will help us manage our recon data easily. You can also use the sort command with the unique flag to get the same result if you prefer. Both methods will give us a clean, organized list of subdomains to use for the next steps in our recon workflow. Now we will remove all the unnecessary files to clean up our recon data. This helps reduce noise in our workflow and keeps our workspace organized, making it easier to focus on the next steps in our recon process. We have collected a huge number of subdomains, but not all of them are active. Many of these subdomains are not working, so they won't help us in our recon. Now, we will filter all of our subdomains to find only the active ones. This will help us focus on targets that are actually live and reduce wasted time during testing. At this stage, we will use a tool called HTTPX Toolkit, also known as HTTPX. It is a very good tool for finding out which subdomains are alive. Using HTTPX will help us quickly filter out the inactive subdomains and keep only the live ones for our further recon and testing. At the same time, we will run this tool again with another command. HTTPX not only helps us find active subdomains, 
but it also gives us more information like IP addresses, services, locations, server details, status codes, and other technical information. Now, we will run it to learn more about our subdomains and to better understand our targets for the next steps in our recon process. Here, we have collected all the alive subdomains. These are the subdomains that are active and responding. Here, we found only 695 active subdomains out of the 5,317 subdomains we collected. This shows that many subdomains were inactive. Here, the HTTPX tool has provided us with extra information along with the active subdomains. We found details like IP addresses, server types, status codes, and other technical information. Thank you for watching. The next part will be coming soon, so stay tuned and make sure to subscribe now. If this video helped you, don't forget to like and share it with others who are learning recon. See you in the next part.